I think we will skip uh, right over to Jim Mellon, who is a famous biotech investor, I guess most famous for his investment in motivation that went into an exit of, uh, I think, $14.5 billion to Pfizer. Uh, more recently, he switched to uh, the aging and longevity field, where he's been, I think, uh, he started a company called Juvenescence and wrote a book about investing in, in the longevity industry. And so he's really, uh, I think, a key figure in connecting investors with this emerging uh, aging and longevity field. Can you hear me, Jim? Maybe, are you, are you, maybe Jim is, are you muted, Jim? We can't hear you here. Uh, I'm not anymore, am I? Fantastic. We can hear you and we Great. can, and we can Hi to Copenhagen. Hi, Alex, in Hong Kong, I guess. And uh, we're just uh, finalizing our little bit of technology here with Anthony Chow and myself, who many of you uh, know. Um, and um, I'm going to tell you about uh, Juvenescence. Uh, I actually was not the uh, first investor in Medivation, but thank you for saying that. It was Greg Beatty, my, one of my partners, but I, we were early investors alongside him. But what we did do is to start a company called Biohaven five years ago, which uh, some of you may be familiar with. It's got a drug now in the US market for migraine. Uh, and we started that with uh, $3 million uh, for 50 odd percent of the company, and it's now about $4 billion. So it's been a good success. But I think more importantly, it demonstrates that it is possible to get a novel compound onto the US market, the most difficult market to get approval in, uh, in a relatively short space of time. And that is largely down to uh, the CEO of the company, who's called Vlad Koric, but uh, also importantly, my other partner, who's called Det Dugan, who some of you will know was formerly the head of drug development at Pfizer. So the three of us, uh, older than Alex, and certainly older than you, Morton, um, started Juvenescence two years ago. And if Alex thinks it's uh, we need to be urgent uh, in what we're doing, uh, we, that's the three of us, need to be even more urgent because we're uh, of advancing years. And uh, so um, we, will, uh, we are moving at light speed to try and uh, advance this uh, faster. I'm trying to work out how I can move these slides. Here we go. Um, now I've got it. Um, we are a company that is focused on uh, extending health span, which you will have heard a lot about in the, this wonderful conference over the last few days. Um, and uh, our mission is within a few years to be responsible alongside some other people uh, other companies, other research institutions, universities, etc., uh, to extend healthy lifespan by eight, ten years. That's our mission. And we know that things will work. We know that's going to happen. We just don't know what's going to work. And as you will have seen in the last week or so, Unity had a great disappointment. Samumed has had a disappointment. Uh, and of course, uh, a few months ago, Restore Bio had a disappointment. The reason that we have 20 projects and post this fundraising that we're doing at the moment, and then subsequently our public offering uh, to raise even more money is that we want to have uh, chips on every number on the casino and on uh, red and black so that something will come up for us because we know we only need one or two uh, projects to work to make very good financial returns. And although we are not really in it for the money because we're going to lock ourselves up on the a long period of time, um, we do realize that without money, the science that we all love and adore and are, are devoted to will not progress uh, as fast as it should do. Because as Alex said, Time is running out for all of us, and we need to get this stuff uh, out there, widely diffused uh, for humanity. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do our little bit for with Juvenescence. Now, just starting off, uh, everyone on this uh, video uh, conference knows about uh, how life extension has uh, 
been evident over the last century or so, how people used to die relatively uh, early and now they die older and older despite COVID. And uh, one of the things that encourages me when uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit down about progress in the industry is that if you look at the obituaries in newspapers and you go back to the 1970s, you'll see people typically died in their 60s and 70s. And today, most people are dying in their late 80s, 90s, and even over 100 in many instances. There are about 600,000 people on the planet today who are over 100 years old. Uh, it is estimated that without advances in technology, in other words, we will have advances in technology, but without that, there will be at least 100 million people over 100 years old by the year 2000. Uh, 100, which is inc absolutely remarkable, considering that in 1917, when the King of England, as he then was, uh, handed out the first telegrams to people who were over 100 anywhere in the British Empire, which at that time was uh, half the world, uh, there were only 24 people as recipients of those telegrams who were either 100 or over 100. So the, the, the pace of change in uh, the numbers of very elderly people is quite remarkable and will continue to be remarkable. And because of technology and the people who are on this call, a lot of you are working in the technology, because of you, uh, we will have, I think, a dramatically higher number uh, than 100 million by the year 2100. And some of us, uh, maybe not me, but some of you will be there to witness that. And indeed, uh, every one of you will be over 100 by then if you do make it. Uh, that, that far. So it's, it's, a, it's an incredible technology. Um, I am trying to move the slide again. Uh, here we go. Uh, and the, the reason that I'm so optimistic, and we've raised the largest amount of money as a private company in this area so far in, of our type, uh, is because if you look at what's happening under the surface, uh, uh, there is a remarkable amount going on. It's not like the latest iPhone. It's not like the latest uh, computer or TikTok or any of those things, uh, because most people are not directly affected by it. But there is a huge amount going on in biotech, uh, so much so that when I wrote my first book about biotech in 2012 called Cracking the Code, and more recently, the new edition of Juvenescence uh, was reprinted, uh, in those seven years, you've had the development of AI, of which Alex is a very leading exponent, and we're proud to be investors in his company in silico medicine for the development of novel compounds in remarkably short periods of time. You've had cancer immunotherapy. It didn't exist in 2012. This year, uh, it's going to be a $200 billion sales uh, industry, and it's had biblical effects in many cancers, and most particularly in blood cancers. You've had the cure for hepatitis C, which represented the world's largest selling drug uh, at the peak of its sales uh, when Gilead was selling $15 billion a year of the cure for hepatitis C. That didn't exist in 2012. And now if you've got the money, you can be cured of hepatitis C. Uh, and of course, there's also CRISPR, which will be a major factor in the science of uh, longevity going forward. And it's something that we are actively engaged in researching and potentially using in the therapies uh, and drugs that we're developing. So all that's happened in seven years. Now, what's going to happen in the next seven years gets back to my original point. We don't know, none of us know exactly what's going to work. If you think the very nice people at Unity uh, knew that their drug was going to fail, uh, they wouldn't have spent all the money that they did. But the drug did fail, the same with Restore Bio and the same with the OA drug for uh, semi-med, despite huge amounts of, of money going into that. So bi uh, biotech is a very difficult uh, thing to get right, but lots of optimism and a lots of deflation when things don't work. It doesn't mean that things won't work full stop. Things will work. And uh, we believe that some of the products that we've got will work, but we want to spread our bets as widely as possible uh, because the failure rate is very high in biotech. No doubt some of the stuff that we do will fail, but we know, we know that two or three of our things will work and we're super excited as a result about the future. So I'm trying to move forward, Anthony, again. Uh, this is a kind of Hallmark card uh, view of juvenescence, but what we're trying to do is to reimagine a lifetime. The trajectory of our lives will change. We know that the old tradition, uh, traditional view, and I spoke about this on the panel the other day, of you're born, uh, you learn, you earn, you retire, and you expire is, 
is a thing of the past, and that everything about the trajectory of lives, including our relationships, our jobs, and our finances will change as a result of the work that people on this uh, Zoom call are doing. Uh, Anthony? So what we're trying to do is to, uh, as I said, spread bets. Uh, we're using uh, AI. Uh, some of you may have seen that our company, internal company, Relation, got the Gates Award last week for uh, the, using repurposed drugs for the purposes of COVID-19, which was a, a great feather in their cap. Uh, we are working with Alex and his company, and obviously we'll be working with his uh, recently acquired company, uh, Deep Longevity as well, uh, to try and accelerate the process of drug development, uh, and also to extend the period of patent life uh, exploitation, because as you know, there's 20 years of patent life on most drugs, uh, and the longer they take to the develop, the less the IRR on those drugs is. So we're trying to bring the drugs out as quickly as possible so that we can have a decent period, not an excessive period, but a decent period of commercial exploitation of the things that we are uh, discovering. We are a, a, a Isle of Man uh, and BVI company uh, set up to be tax efficient everywhere. Uh, and we have raised, and if you wouldn't mind going forward, uh, we have raised um, just under $170 million in the last two years since we started, and we expect to raise somewhere between two to $250 million on this uh, C-share round and then go public and raise another, you know, 100 million plus on the public offering. So we'll be very well funded. We still have quite a lot of cash on our balance sheet. Uh, and it's our hope that uh, anyone who wants to be funded has got a good idea in uh, the science of longevity will come to us as one of the first calls they make. Uh, we typically buy 50 to 65% of the companies that we fund and develop. Uh, and we are out there to make our scientists, entrepreneurs, great fortunes, uh, hopefully, alongside the shareholders of uh, Juvenescence. We have 29 full-time employees in the business, uh, and our principal establishment is in London, but we also have offices in Boston and in San Francisco. Uh, everyone on this call will be familiar with the, uh, the, the sort of uh, early days of longevity science. Um, obviously, the unveiling of the human genome was a very big thing, but before that, you had the discovery of polymerase. Uh, you've had the knowledge that we have that senolytic drugs uh, help uh, to reverse aging in neurine models. They obviously haven't worked in the case of the knee for a couple of companies, but it doesn't mean to say they're not going to work in the future in, in other areas. Unity has obviously got ongoing trials in, in uh, age-related macular degeneration. Uh, we also have a senolytic drug that's in development, uh, and we hope to learn from the problems that have been associated with uh, other companies uh, in the field. Uh, and we will have a cellulitic drug, uh, along with a lot of other drugs in the clinic in the next two or three years. Um, we also know uh, that NAD plus decline is a big problem uh, for older people. And as a result, we have a project that will again be in the clinic in the relatively near future that comes out of the uh, Buck Institute. Anthony, all right. Uh, we know that we can manipulate uh, the lifespan of organisms and uh, of, uh, of animals. Uh, and we know that we can increase the uh, lifespan and health span of those animals very dramatically. And it's our intention to take some of that knowledge and translate it into human beings. Uh, Anthony? And we all know that things like rapamycin, metformin, caloric restriction, uh, and exercise, of course, will increase uh, uh, age, life expectancy, plus health span. Uh, but we are at the very early stage of this industry. We're in the, um, the dial-up stage of the internet. Uh, we are in the, uh, you know, we're picking our way through the gloom and the dark at the moment. But there are glimmers of light, uh, and sooner or 
rather than later, we will see the bright light shining through when we actually have some products that do affect uh, uh, people's health span and their lifespan. And at the same time as that becomes apparent, we will also have biomarkers that prove that that is happening in human beings. This is going to be a very, very big market. I mean, you know, it affects EPSI, everyone on the planet, 7.8 billion people. Uh, if, if Juvenescence just got a dollar a day from a billion of them, we would have a very successful and large business. Um, and there will be other companies that will be equally or even perhaps more successful than, than we are in this area. Uh, and the investment banks uh, recognize that, which is why every major investment bank is after Juvenescence for a uh, public offering. Uh, and we will be public uh, within, at the very latest, the next year or so. Um, and I think we will be the first of our type uh, to be public uh, on a, a recognized stock exchange, which will likely be the US market, either NASDAQ or, uh, or, the, uh, or the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, we're addressing at the moment uh, diseases such as which have a, an immediate commercial impact, but a longevity, a pro-longevity effect uh, later on. We're addressing diseases with our compounds such as CKD, uh, OA, uh, which has obviously failed recently, but we have a different mechanism to deal with that. We've got a drug in development for Alzheimer's, which is a preventative drug that we hope to have in the clinic in the next year or so, uh, which you take on a daily basis in your 40s and 50s, and it will stop you from getting, well, that's the idea anyway, it will stop you from getting Alzheimer's, even if you have the predisposition, such as APOA4 uh, gene variants. Uh, we will have a drug in the clinic in the next year or so for anorexia, cachexia. We have a program for liver disease that's about to go into a phase two under FDA auspices, um, organ regeneration, which will then be extended into thymic, well, it is actually in animal models and thymic tissues, uh, and for the pancreas. Uh, we'll have in metabolic disease in total uh, about, well, not about eight INDs over the next 18 months, which is a remarkable pace for a relatively new company. Uh, and uh, we're also addressing rheumatoid arthritis and Parkinson's disease with the projects that we have underway. Not all of these will work as we well know, but we have assembled uh, a team that, you know, should, should deliver. So uh, myself, Greg and Deck are the head of the company. We own approximately half of the company. Greg and I have invested in every round of the company and we will invest in this round as well. Um, we put in 30 million of the $170 million that's been uh, raised so far of our own money. Uh, this is a company, it's not a fund. There are no fees, no performance fees or anything like that. And some of the people that we've hired include David Roblin, who was formerly the chair of the Francis Crick that all of you will be familiar with. Colin Watts, who was formerly the CEO of Vitamin Shop and the president of Weight Watchers, um, who is heading up our consumer facing division. David Elam, who's had a long career as finance director in uh, biotech companies. Margaret Jackson, who's a rock star, who's heading up our metabolic division. Steve Felstead, who is very senior at Pfizer. Uh, and uh, Nafis Malik, who's an expert in stem cells, who's uh, helping us with our stem cell uh, business uh, through the company called Ajax. And then we have an on RX team uh, that is about to launch, and then by about, I mean, 1st of October, our first product, a uh, consumer facing product, which is cardio protective, which is uh, cognition protective, and which will induce ketosis and therefore provide weight loss. And it's um, a grass product, so it's not had to go through. Uh, FDA approval. It comes out of the Buck Institute um, and it's a ketone ester with great potency. And we've driven down the cost of goods in, in that because if, if any of you do take ketone esters, you know they're very expensive. Uh, we expect to deliver this to the consumer for $7 on a daily basis by a subscription. And it has a remarkable effect. And this will be the first of eight products from the non RX um, uh, division. Uh, which will be launched on an annual basis. And we expect uh, the, this first one to have sales after two years of $100 million um, annually in the United States for this, uh, it's called Metabolic Switch. And watch out for it on the 1st of October for its launch in, in the United States. Uh, the team has had quite good success and the past motivation was mentioned by uh, Morton, but also by Haven, Ascent, Amarin, Viagra. And we were also the, uh, that was DEC at Pfizer, we also underwrote uh, the 
purchased uh, by Arrowhead of all of Russia's RNA assets um, for $25 million. And, and uh, since then, the price of um, Arrowhead has gone up by 50 times. So it's been a good success. Uh, Anthony? And then we have uh, what you might call an ecosystem that's been built up over the years. Some of it with the help of Alex, whose lovely photograph is at the bottom left. Uh, but people like Eric Legas, founder of Ligenesis, which is our organ regeneration program. Eric Verdon, very familiar to many of you. Annalisa Jenkins, uh, Steve Haggerty, and uh, Li Hui uh, Tsai, uh, who are involved in our um, anti-Alzheimer's uh, program. Charlie Roberts, be familiar to many of you, the co-founder of Freenome, and also half-time with uh, Juvenescence, who is uh, in charge of our relation um, division, which is the one that just got the grant from the uh, Gates Foundation. Anthony? And these are some of our companies. Uh, we are more silo-driven rather than corporate-driven, but these companies do have names. Uh, the two that are, well, three that are nearest to commercialization are Biomass, which is the one that will have AINDs over the next year and a half. Uh, and uh, of course, Ajax already has products and they've just done seven licensing deals with commercial institutions. And particularly Ligenesis, which we own half of, which as I said, in the next month or two, will be in sick patients in a phase two with liver failure. Um, if you don't mind moving forward, Anthony. And so this is our, every, Every company has these sort of uh, 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 these sort of slides. Um, originally, um, the instead of having dollar signs after the various phases where we were going to do inflection points, because we always um, try and partner in phase two, uh, we had uh, bombs there, which I didn't think was very uh, good. So we've now put dollar signs there instead, because I'm sure that none of these will blow up. Well, at least I hope none of them will blow up. But we have a very wide range of projects, as you can see all of them related to longevity, but all of them having near-term commercial application. So here's uh, Ligenesis as one a brief example of uh, a company that we really like a lot. Um, Ligenesis is using lymph nodes uh, adjacent to uh, failing organs uh, to, to basically create alternative boost organs. Uh, it's done 400 animal studies. There hasn't been a single failure, and including dogs and and uh, and pigs. Uh, and uh, the FDA has given them approval to go ahead with their procedure in sick patients. The great thing about it is that um, this can be done as an outpatient procedure for about $100,000 compared to $700,000 for a liver transplant. And because of uh, the use of Ajax's stem cells, we will not have to put these patients subsequent to their procedure uh, onto immunosuppressant drugs. So there's a very, very big market potential for this. And we'll know within a year whether this works or not, you know, dose escalating phase two trial. Um, and we're gonna follow it up with, as I said earlier, thymic tissue regeneration, which has obvious um, longevity effects because as we've seen in the pandemic, uh, old people are the ones who die most, mostly. And that's partly because they don't have a thymus and therefore they can't create new T cells and they can't have their B cells um, uh, matured in the thym thymus. So we're gonna regrow thymic tissue, which is super exciting. Um, we're also uh, in the metabolic division developing novel uh, CNS appetite stimulants, as you can see, and we're going to reverse and we are gonna reverse anorexia and cachexia and also do something about obesity with some very exciting drugs that have been developed and that will go into the clinic relatively soon. And again, you know, you can see that uh, our model is a frugal model. We only put in one and a half million dollars uh, so far for 42.5% of the company. We will own 65% of that company by putting in another $5 million shortly. And we will then start uh, looking for partners in some of these um, indications with extremely exciting uh, data so far. And then of course, our metabolic switch product, which I mentioned earlier on, uh, we want to launch uh, successors to that. Uh, as I said, one a year for eight years. Uh, the, we put in a total of $8.7 million into that business uh, uh, for 77% of the company. Um, 
and we expect the that company ultimately will be sold to a big nutraceutical company and typically those type of companies consumer facing companies sell for about four times annual revenues and this is a superb uh, ketone ester product and they've actually dealt with the taste issue with if anyone's tried ketone esters it doesn't taste very nice this has been the taste has been suppressed very effectively uh, and um, anyone who wants to try it just get in touch with us and we'll see if we can get you a, a, a bottle of it to have a go um, Anthony and then of course we have our investment which we're very grateful for in Alex's company in silico we were among the first investors uh, in that company. Um, and we own about, I think about 15% of the company. Uh, we paid around $40 million pre-money valuation. And Alex is doing his Series C at a very significant uplift, multiple uplift for that with some very serious investors. So we're very grateful for that. And in-house we have uh, this relation, which is using uh, AI to try and repurpose uh, old drugs for a whole series of things, but particularly in longevity. Uh, and um, that's a good team. And uh, that's a, we, we obviously own the majority of that company. Um, uh, and uh, we're very excited about what they're up to as well. So uh, we're gonna have one phase two trial, which for a two year old company is incredibly fast. And we're gonna have uh, AINDs over the next year or so. And we're going to have our first non-RX, but a medically proven product uh, launched in this year. And so we think we're ready. Um, we've got a good, uh, a good veteran team. Um, we've got great ecosystem. We're friends with and collaborators with many people in this industry. And we've got many shots on goal. So we're ready for an IPO. And I can tell you that... Uh, the big banks like Credit Suisse or in the biotech area, Cowan, Chardin, Stiefel are all engaged with us in shaping our, our future uh, capital inflows. Um, Greg, myself and Deck will lock ourselves up for at least three years. We don't want, we believe that this is a very important mission. It will require a lot of money to take these multiple products to phase twos where we'll partner with uh, pharma companies or, or uh, other companies. Um, and uh, we hope that in a year's time, we can give you some even better news about some of the products actually working in patients. Uh, and we will have our first revenue uh, very, very soon with the uh, ketone ester metabolic switch. So this is very exciting. And that is the presentation on juvenescence. I don't know if there's time for any questions, but I'm very happy to take any, uh, maybe moderated through Morton or uh, Alex about the juvenescence story. But I really thank you for your, your attention and, and for you inviting me on this. Thank this you very today. much. Thank you very much, Jim. Really, really uh, exciting uh, stuff you're presenting and fantastic that juvenescence may be going uh, public very soon. So that's really exciting. There are questions on Slack. Uh, I'm going to give you the most upvoted, which is my own question. So uh, I'm. Uh, yes. So uh, I write a uh, great talk, Jim. Uh, what is your strategy for risk minimizing in the longevity field considering lots of hype? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I mean, I think that our best weapon in this respect is Deck Dugan, who has a 50% record from mouse to man over his very long career uh, because he doesn't either accept bullshit nor does he accept us putting more money after a uh, mediocre or failing project. Now, as yet, we haven't pulled the plug on anything, but I'm sure that we will over the next year or so. I mean, I think of the 20 projects that we have at the moment and probably 10 projects, because the next area that we're going to go into is the gene therapy and, and uh, microbiome areas, which are both complementary to pro longevity strategies. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, of the 20 we have at the moment, I would be surprised if we end up with 10, uh, but we'll also have another 10 waiting in the wings when we have sufficient capital to devote to them. So realistically, the way that we work is that we put in a relatively small amount of money to further the ambitions of a scientist entrepreneur or research institution or something that comes out of university. So typically three to $5 million to begin with, we will control the company. So this is not a passive investment vehicle. 
we will let that company use our, our uh, accounting resources and any other resources that they require, plus the link to our AI uh, capability. Um, and the 29 people who are in the company will help mentor, guide, and so forth the projects that we have underway. The second part of the project would typically require more money for a phase one, so five to $10 million. We'll provide that, assuming we've got enough money. And then we'll also uh, go to phase two, either in partnership or we'll fund the phase twos ourselves, just depending on what the, uh, the opportunities are. I can tell you that Ligenesis, as an example, is, has been approached by several large pharma, pharma companies already, but it's too early for us to uh, allow that company to be diluted by a big pharma company. We don't want to de-risk it yet. So it'll be case by case basis, but Deck, Greg, and to a certain extent myself are all familiar with, uh, you know, you've got to, you've, you know the old Kenny Rogers song, you know, you don't count your chips when you're sitting at the table, you've got to know how to fold them, yeah. and, you know, know how to hold them. Right. Uh, we're old pro and we'll do our very best not to get caught up in either hype or it down, putting our investors' money down a plug hole. Uh, I do feel very sorry for the companies that recently have not succeeded, mm -hmm. but that's the peril of having only one, one or two shots on goal. If you have multiple shots, you're probably going to get something in the goal. Yeah, sounds very good. I think this is a great uh, place to end. We are quite a, lo a lot, lot of uh, time over, over the time limit, and we're supposed to have a, a break 20 minutes ago. So. Uh, but yeah. sincerely, sincerely appreciate it, Jim, and fantastic insight into, into the world that you are in, which is, I think, very far from my world. Uh, but it's uh, really, really exciting that, that I think there's this uh, movement of investing in this area. Um, and there are questions on Slack, Jim, if you can go to Slack and uh, answer yeah. them. Uh, that would be really great. There's a lot of questions, a lot of interest.